How do you become the man that God has intended you to be? Now, I realize that I'm going down a path and in introducing myself to a niche that a lot of people aren't going to be open to because a lot of society has a goldfish tension span where they're only open and receptive to girls twerking on TikTok or BS videos that serve them absolutely no purpose besides wasting their time and energy and stealing their focus. Everybody loves that direction. Until they get to a certain age, they look back and they realize that the enemy, the thief, the system, the devil, whomever has stolen all of their time and they look back and regret like wow where did all that time go and when they wisen up and start taking accountability for their actions and their mind and where they're putting their focus and their attention they would have wished just like myself that they started earlier so it is very important to only feed yourself value the reason i decided to go down this path instead of that clown youtuber road is because i want to make videos of substance so i can self-actualize so i can grow and i can help people in the process how to be the person that god wanted you to be the mighty purpose-filled man that makes his ancestors and his mom and his dad proud. Number one is building up your identity, your self-belief, your self-confidence, your self-trust, building yourself up. Because guaranteed, your purpose has nothing to do with this nine to five rat race system. It's something entirely different. God has another unique plan for you, but society has layered on a whole bunch of distractions and desires and things you should be chasing that you probably don't know what your purpose is. Because the system society teachers told you, well, you gotta get good grades, you gotta graduate you got to do well at your job you got to be well at communication you got to do all these things and none of it really has to do with you a lot of us will take a detour or we'll get drug off course listening and following other people who are imposing their own beliefs or their own purposes onto us and we become a follower who is confused instead of just taking the reins ourselves slowing down time and truly understanding who we are the thing that's honestly going to make your parents proud the thing that's going to make your family your ancestors proud is tapping into your true purpose and why is that because when it's your true true purpose when it's your calling when it's the reason you are waking up in the morning it's the thing that god has called you to do you will feel a fire you'll go to the gym you'll be taking care of yourself respecting yourself trusting yourself building yourself up mentally and getting that emotional intelligence and you'll just be working on yourself constantly because you're actually passionate about life and when you tap into this spark that is when you'll make everybody around you proud but when you're chasing after something that's not your purpose you will become a weak individual with maybe a lot of income a lot of outside success but that will not truly fulfill you or give you that flame that could push you to the next level. And you have to build your identity because your purpose, what gives you that spark, what gives you that passion, guaranteed it has nothing to do with this nine to five rat race. And when you go against the grain from society, you have to have a strong identity because you're gonna get thrown a lot of BS opinions that have no substance, that carry no value. It's only a limitation, a need to try to suppress you or something to drag you off course into something that just doesn't matter. You have to build that confidence, that self-belief, that inner conviction inside of yourself so you can become an unshakable, confident, relentless, believing individual who can operate and navigate through life. When you're getting a whole bunch of assorted opinions, when you respect yourself and you care about your mind and you have identity, you're rooted in who you are and you know who you are. Instead of just grabbing onto this one, grabbing onto this one because you're lost and you don't know where you're going and you don't know what's happening and you're just trying to become successful and you're trying to follow after society and just trying to be a good man and trying to do all these things. When you're living like that, when you're living like a follower and you're just gathering up all these opinions thinking that they're going to be the best for you you're also going to be reeling in a bunch of poison a bunch of limitation a bunch of garbage because society is a hive mind of controlled mediocre individuals and that's just not even individuals just a group hive mind that offers the same ideas the same limitations the same blueprint nothing changes but when you have self-identity you'll be getting all these bs opinions that will try to deter you or take you off path or limit your mind that you'll have all these things coming in but when you respect yourself and you have an identity in yourself and you know who you are you'll listen to the ones that have value and you'll disregard the rest like a buffet what is good what's not i'm gonna go and eat the good food and i'm gonna leave the rest where it's at and if you don't have a strong sense of self you will just be a feather in the wind listening to every single opinion it doesn't matter where it's coming from you'll be distracted you'll be confused you'll be lost you'll be trying to follow that guy's purpose while also trying to follow this guy's purpose and we all have different puzzles god has given Given us each a different puzzle that we have to figure out ourselves. We all have different pieces. We all have different challenges. We all have different family dynamics. We all have different negative relationships that have to be resolved. And following that guy's advice is not going to fix this relationship that I have to deal with. And following this guy's success is not necessarily going to work for me because he may be smarter than me. He may be more advanced in some area that I just don't have. God has not bestowed that gift upon me and I just can't compete with that guy in that field that he's in. And yes, I could take inspiration. I could take motivation 
because that's value and that's going to push me to the next level. But copying his entire blueprint that specifically worked for him is not going to work because he figured out his puzzle, how it wasn't working and how he had to fix and move certain pieces to become a certain type of man to survive, to overcome his environment, to then conquer his environment, to then move on to the next level. All of us have a different puzzle. And when you go to compare, when you go to compete, you are wasting your time and energy and you're taking your eyes away from your plate to look at the next man's plate. And all you're going to do is be stuck with the same plate. Nothing's going to be changed. No food's going to be added onto it. Nothing will happen to your life. But now maybe somebody's doing that to you and they're going to take something off your plate and you weren't looking at your plate. So now that's gone and now you have less. So focus on yourself. Build your own self-identity. Who are you? Who did God design you to be? One way to figure this out is just avoid all the distractions. Go ghost. Disconnect from social media. Go outside and just connect with yourself. Think for a little bit. Stare at a wall for a couple of hours. Whatever you have to do, you just have to consider this. If I was in a padded cell and I had nothing to do, I had no phone, I had no computer, I wasn't connected to social media, I couldn't talk to anybody, what desire would I have inside of myself? What is something that I would want to complete or something I would be thinking about? That is probably your purpose. The next one, never attach yourself to any societal groups. Do not become a permanent figure in any societal groups that you cannot control. And what do I mean by this? You may be like, oh, well, I don't want to control people. I don't want to impose my will on other people. And that's not what I mean. I mean, don't go to randomized group gatherings with random people all the time because people have this jealous, envious thing when they see somebody succeeding or doing better than them. They have this subconscious thing to attack, to drag down that crab in the bucket mentality. And it doesn't matter if you go to a church. Go to a church and give a couple testimonies, start getting the crowd hyped, and you'll realize that there will be people, even at a church, who will try to limit you, who will try to sway your mindset into a different direction, or they'll impose their own beliefs onto you, so you change who you are. They will try to manipulate the way you think. They'll try to suppress your thinking or suppress your talents because they feel a sense of threat. And that reigns true with every societal group. So instead of just partaking in random places, bob in and out. Build yourself up in private and once in a while, go out. Go to church. Go to an event. But don't become a part of that hive mind where your existence is determined by every single opinion around you. Because when you're in these hive minded places or you're a part of a social group that doesn't align with your values, you're just there to have fun. There will definitely be seeds planted, limitations, distractions thrown your way. Even if it's met with good intentions or they're trying to be kind or they're trying to be nice. And I'm not saying absolutely exterminate your social life. I'm just saying build yourself up in private. Stand strong on who you are. Don't be a feather in the wind who's going to change or shift his opinion to any piece of advice that is given. And when you are strongly rooted in who you know you were meant to be, then you can go out in public because you're not going to be persuaded or moved into a different direction. But if you live in those hive minds, your potential will be stripped away, your mindset will be suppressed, and there'll be a lot of other complications. The alternative route is building a brotherhood, gathering up some friends who are like-minded, who don't put a limitation or a ceiling over your existence, who don't dampen your ideas. And I'm not talking about people who just suck you off and tell you you're the man because we don't want to be egotistical because pride leads to destruction. But I just mean like-minded individuals who are on the same page that you are. You have each other's back. You respect one another. You know each other's missions. You know each other's weaknesses. You know each other's strengths. You know how to communicate with one another and how to better one another and how to build another up. Back in the day, masculinity was you're going to sleep. Okay, I'm staying up so I could watch for wolves, so I could watch for bears, so I could protect you. I will watch your back so you can get some rest. And when I need to go to sleep, you'll do the same for me. And that's the kind of people you want to surround yourself with. You don't want to be surrounded by losers where you're going to make a little bit of incremental improvement inside of your life. And they're going to be talking down on you, trying to persuade you to go in a different direction so they can feel comfortable around you because your growth makes them feel uncomfortable. You want to be surrounded by people who push you, who motivate, who inspire, and who have your back, who are willing to fight for you. You don't want to be surrounded by people where you get a little bit of success and now they feel the need to try to tear you down by spreading rumors to ruin your identity or to talk you down or to try to sabotage what you got going on. You want people who have each other's backs, who look after one another, who actually enjoy each other's presence. You want a brotherhood of strong men, strong women who have each other's back. When it's time for war, we're all coming for you. When it's time for peace, we're all peaceful. You need to separate yourself away from the crabs, the ones who want to grab your leg and pull you down, and you need to pivot yourself towards the sharks and swim with the sharks. The vast majority, 99.9% .9 of society is filled with crabs. Hold up. Wait a minute. They're living on autopilot. They're living in that fog that they failed once, so life is over, and now they have to take everybody else out. A lot of them are confused and they're lost. The next 
one is being selective with your relationships and really just having an understanding of who should be in your life and who shouldn't be in your life and kicking out the people who shouldn't be in your life. But it's pretty simple. Do they boost my energy? Do they boost my mood? Do they boost my motivation? Do they boost my inspiration? Do they make me want to improve my lifestyle, improve my mindset? Or do they make me want to better myself? Or do they do the opposite? Are they a stumbling block? Are they only there to make me laugh and the rest is just a bunch of BS and drama? Do they add any value to my life? It's inevitable to have quarrels with the people that you are surrounded by. That's just going to happen. It's never going to be perfect. It's never going to be sunshine and rainbows. Life seasons are dark and then it's good. It's high and then it's low. But you want people who you know are fighting for a better life, who are pushing towards greatness, who want to move to a more positive direction. And I'm not saying it's going to be a perfect relationship, but it's not hard to gauge what that person's intentions are. Are they in your circle just to make you laugh? And then they're just eating bags of chips, playing video games, and then they want you to play video games and they want to drag you out to go to the bar to drink. Like, okay, I'm getting a little bit of laughter from that person, but is that beneficial? Is that helping my future? By me laughing all the time and having pointless conversations that lead nowhere or improve absolutely no aspect of our life, is that benefiting me or is that a cope because I don't want to do the internal work? Is that just a huge cop-out cope? Is that the kind of people you want in your circle? Distractions who distract you from working on yourself? You don't want those types of people. You want people who are not going to judge you to be a dick, but people who are going to be like, you know what, Landon, I feel like you need to work on this. I'm not trying to be a dick. I just feel like this part of your life needs some work. And if you leaned into that direction, because I truly do care for you and I want to see you do good, you should go in that direction. This has happened to me so many times. Like there's been so many people in my life who have been so much more successful than me. And I looked at them and I clapped for them and I applauded them. And then I'll just get like a little bit of success. Nothing really crazy. They would become envious and they'll try to sabotage what I'm doing and they'll be spreading doubts and limitations. I feel like when you do things properly, when you respect people and when you have integrity, you don't cheat anybody, you don't talk behind anybody's back and you try to be a good person, God will reward you eventually when you continue to do the right thing. I've had that happen so many times where I'll have a friend who'll be really successful. I'll be clapping with them even though my shit sucks and it's not doing nothing. I will not have a jealous bone in my body. I'll be clapping for him and then my stuff will start to pop off and it'll be like, wait, whoa, it can only be me. You don't want those people in your life. You need a brotherhood in your life where your success is everybody's success. If I'm winning, then we're all winning. And why is that? Because the energy I get from winning is going to wear off on you where you may want to go to the gym, where you may want to get better and improve some certain area in your life by being surrounded by winners and people who are doing good. In return, you will win yourself, but cancel out that winner. He doesn't exist in your life anymore. Now, what do you have? You're surrounded by losers. Now, what are you going to become? A loser. Because what you continually hear, the people you are beside, the people you look up to, the people in your circle, you will become like them. You will just feed off each other's energy. You will pick up their beliefs. You will copy their habits. You will aspire to be like that individual. So be very selective with the people that you allow in your hemisphere, in your inner circle. Even if they're kind, even if they're pleasant to be around, even if they're positive, are they spreading seeds of doubt? Do they have limitation in their mind? When you have a strong identity, this stuff doesn't really affect you. But you do want to be surrounded by people who bring out the best of you continually and they don't have no weird energy. Build your belief, mind, and physical in private. Work on yourself continually to bring out the greatest version of yourself. Go to the gym each and every single day. Work out the kinks inside of your mind. You may have resentment. You may be comparing. You may have these toxic traits inside of your mind like we all do. All of us have negative intrusive thoughts. Every single person. I don't care who you are. The people who don't have that is because they did the internal work. They worked on themselves. They worked out those kinks. They did some self-development to get themselves out of those trenches. And that's what you have to do. Build and work on yourself in private. So when you go out in public, you're built up and you know who you are. And you can't be moved by some opinion that otherwise would have got you if you were confused and had no self-identity. So Build yourself up in private. Do the work, especially when you don't want to do it. If it's not enjoyable in the moment, but it's a necessity and it has to get done, do it. Get into the habit of doing things that you don't want to do because those things you don't want to do are what you need to do. Even the useless tasks that feel like they're not going to amount to anything or serve no purpose at all, like doing the dishes, cleaning, feeding your animals, washing, drying clothes, has a huge purpose. And you may just glance over it and put it to the side like it really doesn't matter, but that's your environment. And having a clean, organized environment is going to put your mind at ease. Those subconscious attacking thoughts in the back of your mind won't be so rampant because your environment will be nice, will be clean, will be organized. Your environment is a representation of how you feel inside. If your environment is disgusting, dirty, unorganized, your thoughts are going to be unorganized. You're going to be confused. You're going to have brain fog. You're going to be overthinking, guaranteed. But when your environment is nice and tidy, so will your mind because you're not looking at so many items that are throwing you off. Everything is in its natural place and you're not overthinking or getting mental fatigue of where is that item? 
where's this item? Because there is such a thing called decision fatigue. The more scattered your items are around and the more mental energy you use trying to look for them. Because yes, decisions in your life, simple things like what shall I wear today? What should I eat? What should I try today? All of that is decision fatigue. If you put a simple schedule together of this is what I'm training, this is what times I'm going to be eating at, and this is what I'm going to be eating, it's going to be the same thing each and every single day. I'm not going to change it too drastically. Like if you completely eliminated that thought process, you could use that mental energy for something else, whether it be your purpose or something you actually care about. Because the more you fantasize, the more you contemplate, the more you worry about things that truly don't matter, the more your mind will fatigue over time. And a lot of people aren't aware of this because their minds are already fatigued. They're overthinking. They don't take care of their minds. But when your mind is clear and you're thinking properly, you realize that your mind has a limited amount of energy inside of it. And these decisions take up mental energy. That's why billionaires wear the same thing every day. They get meal prep every day so they don't have to think about it. They can just think about their work and all their mental energy can be focused on their work. But just seeing a dirty, disgusting environment and thinking about it is going to waste your mental energy. It's going to make you depressed. Living in an unclean, disgusting place is going to make you feel some type of way. A clean, organized space will relax your mind and reduce confusion, anxiety, brain fog, depression. An unorganized environment causes an unorganized mindset. And cleaning up after yourself and doing that simple work, especially when you don't want to, has a huge impact on your life. Now, just imagine the other things in your life that you didn't even think about, like doing your purpose when you don't feel like doing your purpose, not going to the gym because you don't feel like going to the gym. Like what other complications will that have? Oh, stop being so desperate. I see this online. People are so desperate for money, for success, to get views, to get attention, to get it right now. I need it now. They need a million dollars right now. And they're so desperate to achieve their dreams when things don't go the way that they calculated it inside of their fish brain. And it doesn't happen in a span of one month. It hurts so bad. The more desperate you are to achieve something, the more it's going to hurt when it doesn't play out the way you intended it to play out. The more you chase your prey, the faster it's going to run. Don't work towards your purpose to attain external gratification or external items because if you don't get that fast enough, if it doesn't stimulate your brain fast enough with the results, with the success, with the money in your bank account, if it doesn't happen exactly when you expect it to happen, now you're going to stumble and now you're going to fall and you're going to be depressed and you're going to be miserable. Work towards your purpose from a sense of passion. I'm doing this and I don't care about the outcome because I enjoy it. It resonates with me and I know I was called to do it and that's the only reason and whatever happens, happens. One thing I know for certain is it feels good. So if it feels good and I'm putting this much energy into it, it must be my calling. So let me just follow my calling and not impose other worldly desires on top of it that it needs to be this, that it needs to be this. God, I need A and Z. I need a certain amount of money. I need this amount of success. I need, I need, I need. No, just do what you're supposed to do because you love it and whatever happens, happens. Guarantees you're going to garner a lot more success than just monetary success. Maybe it's just keeping the spark alive inside of yourself so you can keep carrying on. You never know. It could be simple or it's inspiring individuals across the screen. You never know where your purpose may take you. But if your soul longs to do it, that's all that matters. Work and let go. It's like the desperate simp who stalks the quote unquote hot girl. She has no interest because he is desperate, easy, accessible, and that option will always be left open. But the moment he stops worrying and engaging in conversation or reaching out, that's the moment she comes seeking attention. That's when the purpose is starting to look for you when you just work and let go. Stop being so desperate to get results. Just go into a flow state. Do what you're supposed to do and do it out of passion because you'll be more consistent. You'll put more time and energy into it because you won't be slacking off because I only got nine views. Oh, I'm not going to give you guys my energy. I'm not going to put my effort into this video today, guys, because last video had only got nine views. I didn't get any money from it. I didn't get any subscribers, so I'm not going to put my time and energy into this video because I care about external results. I'm doing this to attain other things instead of doing it because it's my freaking purpose. Let go. Ignore the outcome. Do it because you simply love it. And I guarantee you, you won't have as many burnouts. Look at Mr. Beast. Absolutely killing it. Doing these huge, crazy videos with a ton of effort. And you see YouTubers doing simple little videos and they're burning out every now and again. And that's because it's forced. They're doing it for money. They're doing it for views. But Mr. Beast does not burn out. He looks happy. He looks positive, And he's just constantly on go, 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 go. And he doesn't burn out. Why is that? He's doing it because he's passionate about it. If you do it for some paper, if you do it for some low value female attention, or if you do it for any reason besides, I love to do this and that's the only reason I'm doing this, then you won't burn out. But if you do it for paper, if you do it for that, you will burn out. Or just give it up entirely. Focus on your assignment and what you have to do. Don't look to your left. Don't look to your right. Don't take unneeded advice. Just focus on your life's puzzle. God gave you a puzzle that you have to fix. My puzzle is different from yours. That guy's puzzle is different from yours. Don't be looking around. Just work on your own puzzle day in and day out. The more you work on your internals, the more you work on your physical,
physical, the better your life will get. The more you work on your own puzzle and work out the kinks and become a better version of yourself, you'll realize, hey, my family isn't so negative. Maybe they were so negative and putting all this pressure on me and being dicks is because I was a loser. And they realized when we pass away, this is the man of the family and he's a loser. He's going to crumble. He's going to, so there's going to be added pressure. But when you become the best version of yourself, life becomes a lot easier because people are inspired. They're motivated. They want to work with you. They see that you're in the right path. When you start putting together your puzzle and working on what you have to work on and focusing on yourself, your life will get easier. But looking around, trying to take a piece out of his puzzle that does not fit yours and trying to cram it into yours is not going to work. Just focus on your life. Focus on fixing the toxic relations in your life and turn them into beneficial, empowering relationships. Work on overcoming mental blocks, limitations, and intrusive programming. Work on your physical appearance, your diet, when you go to bed, being consistent in that routine, your hygiene. There's so many things inside of your puzzle that you need to be working on. And if you focused on your own life and putting together your own puzzle, you'd be so far along. But looking around is just leaving your puzzle where it's at. There's no progression being made because you're not focusing on your task, your assignment that God gave you. Your situation, your relationships, your struggles, your worries, your negative intrusive thoughts, your life is unique to you. We can help guide, we can give pieces of information, but at the end of the day, you have to work on that yourself. And by trying to compete, by trying to compare is going to waste your energy and your time. Because these people on your right and to your left are focused on their puzzles. They don't even know you exist. They're not even focused on you, but you're... <laughs> constantly looking left and right and you're wasting your time and energy. It's just like when I go to the gym and I'm locked into my own world, not focused on anybody else and I'm doing the best I possibly can do. And I have this weirdo beside me who's huffing and puffing, licking his lips in the mirror, trying to do more reps and he's competing with me in his head and I'm his fake enemy and he's trying to do more than me and he's wearing himself out and he's following me around the gym. I'm not even wasting my mental energy on this dude, but his whole life revolves around me. When I leave and another person comes in, he's doing the exact same. He's not focusing on his own life life, his own puzzle. You should be competing with yourself, bettering yourself, focusing on your own puzzle, focusing on yourself, or else you're just going to drain yourself. You are literally giving your energy away to people. If you're focused on this person and they bother you and they can get something out of you, that is you giving your energy away, giving your power away. And that's why so many people are drained because they compete. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with competition, but compete with winners. Don't compete with losers. But every time you compare, every time you compete, every time you try to be like that person or you try to do what they're doing, you're giving a piece of yourself away. Like, here's my energy. Here's my strength. Here's my confidence. No wonder you're depleted. You're not focused on your own world, on your own puzzle, on bettering yourself. You're focused on everybody else and they are living rent-free inside of your head, which is exhausting. But a lot of us know we have robbed potential or potential stored away because we are afraid of judgment. And I have a couple simple tips on how to unleash this potential, which is simply just boosting your self-esteem, confidence, mental fortitude, and disconnecting yourself from society. Because the only reason we're not tapping into our potential and what God designed us to do is because we're afraid of judgment. We care what other people may think or what their opinion may be. But when you disconnect yourself and you sever that tie and you build yourself up and you're not a part of the hive mind, you don't give a f And that's when you become the greatest version of yourself. What you want to belong to and what you want to fit into is what you create down the road. Something that aligns with your purpose, a brotherhood, a group of people who are aligned with your purpose. Don't try to just fit into everything. Don't just put yourself in any circle, in any place, in any position. That's what everybody does. They'll just jump into society. Oh, I want to fit in, so I'm going to fit in with some mediocre losers. Take a step back. Build yourself up, your own identity, so you have enough strength to stand on your belief. And you may be the only one standing on that belief. And then down the line, when you want to fit in, you can fit into a group that God designed for you, something that aligns with yourself. Don't change yourself to fit into your environment. Change your environment to fit you. And I know people are going to be like, oh, well, there's certain things I can't change change like family members and this and that. And trust me, when you work on yourself, when you have a strong mind, when you're doing what you need to do, a lot of those negative relationships will turn into empowering positive relationships because you have done the self-development, you have done the work, and you know how to overcome that and flip it into a positive. So those things will change over time because people are influenced by what they see, what they hear. So if you're doing good, if you're doing amazing, eventually that will rub off on them and they will then take steps to become their best version. And it will take time, but you can change your 
environment. One man can change the world. The more you better yourself, the more you work on yourself, the more you work out those generational curses, kinks, distractions, things that do not serve you, the better your environment will turn out. And you won't become a victim to your environment. You will have the strength to overcome any of it and to influence it. A majority of society, and this has happened to me, we get stuck in a fog of being on autopilot unconscious or we simply given up trying due to past failures, adversity, age, environment. There is a million, a million excuses and they don't stop. Even now, I still have negative thoughts when I'm filming videos like, man, nobody cares about this. Why are you wasting your time and energy? Just give up, walk out. And that means I still have some improvement to do. I still have some self work to do. There's still programs inside of me that don't serve me. And that is my fault for just unconsciously watching everything, listening to every person, taking in every piece of advice. That is my fault. You have to put in the work and you have to work on yourself continually. It's not going to transform or change overnight, but it is never too late. Don't listen to those intrusive thoughts. Instead, take action and work on them and figure out the root cause. Whether you have to journal, work out, distract your mind, go on walks, go on bike rides, whatever you have to do, do that. But that sums up this video and I appreciate you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.